now. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to um, a very special episode of the Coworking Values podcast brought to you with We Share Radio and the European Coworking Assembly. And I'm, I'm going to break with our rhythm of um, doing a podcast each week based on a co-working value and move straight to something that's really important to me. Um, and I know a lot of people in the European Coworking Assembly gang, which is a workshop that's going on in London, which is basically around how the a co-working space can contribute to the economic development i'd love to be running it but i'm not that smart so i've called in um the workshop facilitator steffi gamoff um who will tell you all about it so steffi uh, what are you known for and what would you like to be known for oh wow that's a great question um first of all hi hi bernie hi everyone uh, i'm sure you're just as smart and you could run this really well so um thanks for that <laughs> uh what i'm what I'm known for uh, is to be rebellious, I think, um, to ask difficult questions. I'm known for getting along with lots of people and having a broad network. I would like to be known for um, as a, I would like to be known for as a social justice expert, worker, change maker, activist. I think you're doing uh, quite well. <laughs> That's good, and um, I think I'd really like to be known for finding a way out of gentrification and rethinking the way that we do regeneration. That's brilliant. I was um, so so. One of the things that got me, you know, interested in this was like I my one of the co-working spaces I was a member of for the longest in um in london was 90 main yard which is just by in hackney wick by the canal and it was over the last I don't know, four years that area has been um over gentrified and it's, it's been very painful to walk through that area and watch so how's your how's your anti-gentrification campaign going and, and what do you think we could do about it uh you know what i think it's going well in a way that I feel like many people are starting to have conversations. And this is something that I didn't really experience when I started my work in London. Um, for example, the interest at a workshop like um, the Coworking 2.0 Building Inclusive Spaces workshop that Start to Action is hosting, that I'm facilitating, is bringing about, is, is something that I think is fascinating and brilliant and so needed. Um, People don't want gentrification, and I think that's the first step. Um, that the communities that are moving into areas, the same communities that are um, partly responsible for spiraling housing prices and a change of local dynamics, a change of um, the balance of um, the economic equilibrium of business ecosystems in a local area, those same communities don't want gentrification and are questioning what can we do. And I think that's such an important step. So what's the, um, we'll go, I'm, I'm dying to, I've got to ask two questions, but I'm going to go for this first is um, what will the workshop cover? Cause that's probably, that's what main reason people tuned in today. And then I can get onto a co-working gentrification rant, but what, what, what's the, uh, what's the, what's the goal of the workshop and what will we leave with? So, First of all, we're going to look at co-working as a um, form of empowering a self-employed and a self-employed precariat. Um, what are the challenges? What are the opportunities? And then look through some interactive exercises, some um, sensing journeys. You'll find out what that is if you take part in the workshop <laughs> through London. Uh, look at... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, look at the question of community. What is does community mean to us? And how is community being used currently in the co-working language? And finally, we were going to lay out some concrete strategies for engagement with local organizations. So how can a co-working space start to build partnerships, networks uh, uh, with local groups? And how can it be a place for empowerment for local groups? What would a strategy look like that can achieve exactly that? That's what I want people to walk away with. 
And who are the who are the best people to come? If I if I own um you know if I own Regis, should I be turning up to this, or is it maybe another target market? No, I think you can turn up. I definitely think you can. Um, I think that'd be can. a great move, wouldn't it? Actually, that'd be, that'd be <laughs> exactly. Um, I believe that the conversation is going to be most interesting if there is a diversity of stakeholders. So I hope for a good mix of people who work um, as part of co-working spaces, who run co-working spaces, different sizes, different sized co-working spaces in, in different areas of the country and London. Um, at the same time, I really hope that we have a couple of community activists in the room, people that um, work in local organizations, that lead local organizations and have a bit of a different opinion of co-working spaces, but also might see them as an opportunity for them to access resources and skills and for the area to develop further into a direction that actually benefits a wide range of communities. So, so one of my questions is always, how long do you think it w- or or in your experience or whatever the nice way to ask it is does it take to like build for for a space to build a relationship with a local community is it because it I often I've, i hear a lot of stories of like we we did this and we did this and this happened and it always and it's not the intention of the people telling me that but it always seems like it happened in two weeks but i i know there's more to that so what, what do you think I believe it takes time. I believe it takes time and commitment. If I had to put a timeline on it, say two years at least, especially um, if there is an already established brand identity and culture attached to a specific space. If if you're trying to change that, um, it's going to take a while because it means changing people's perceptions. And um, without trying to give away too much of the workshop content, I think um, what's really needed there is to open up the doors, open up the space and get in as many people as possible to create a new brand, a new identity for that space. Um, And to really, yeah. How how do do you, in your experience, how do you think a co-working space are like, pops up um in a you know somewhere like hackney wick or brixton or finsbury park um occurs to the local community because not because people who work in business don't understand what a co-working space is so what so i've got two questions actually how do you think it occurs to people or what have you heard people say and then what do you think it could be for that area i think it usually occurs as something hey that's not for us um, a space that's uh, for a new group of people that are dominant in this in, in a specific area that have recently moved in, and this has a lot to do with power dynamics, and this has a lot to do with privilege, and a certain self perception of new communities. Uh, who are not very aware of the kind of um, impact that they have on people who might have lived in an area for longer than them. Um, okay, Bernie, can can you repeat the question? I lost my. I That's lost right. my no, no, sure. The the um, it was a very long question. My fault. <laughs> and then and then what could it, what could what could a co working space be to the local area? If if we say we followed the everything in the workshop, I know that's very geeky, but if we did follow everything in the workshop and waited two years, what do you think we could have our co-working space be? Uh, uh, it could simply be a business launch, but for local businesses that have been there for a very long time. Um, if you think about Brixton, for example, Brixton Village, the beautiful arcades and um, with some fantastic local businesses in them or the market traders outside on Brixton Market, um, a co-working space could be a place for them to gain skills, to um, yeah, keep up with the developments and regeneration that are under place and make sure that they stay competitive enough to survive in a local economy. Do, do you think... Um... 
Um, I think you do. So part of my way of asking the question, but you know, do you think a co-working space could be like, like in years ago, you used to have like the, um, you know, the village hall or the community center or, you know, places of religion were, were far more um, frequented. Like I, I grew up in a Catholic background and in every church I was ever part of, there was always, there was always a, a hall and a, a bar in built into the church, which doesn't really happen nowadays. But it, it was a hub. Even people that weren't part of the church would come to the bar and meet. And a lot of things came out of that to do with the local community. Now, I have this ideal that co-working spaces, if heading in the right direction, could fulfill that type of role in the community. Is that? And do you agree? Or I absolutely agree. I think that's the ideal scenario. I think there's a few steps that need to come before that. And they have something to do with the question of who is in the space. Because one of the problems that I see currently is that the kind of people that are involved in the village hall type conversations in the community forums are people who have... I'm going to use the word to have the privilege to have enough time to volunteer and come to these kind of conversations. If you're so busy trying to make ends meet, you will find it difficult to take part in conversations about your local neighborhood. I, I, I totally agree with that part because I'm, I'm part of the, uh, the local residents association in my area here in, in sunny Ilford. And the people there are either like, over committed concerned citizens um and that's you know someone like me or they're they're people who are retired and some of those people not all of them some of those people don't like the way don't like the way the neighborhood's going and other people are just you know bored and it's, it's very hard to find the time to you know participate in your local community absolutely so I believe a way to, first of all, we need to think about how can we, what is needed? What do the people who are missing on this table actually need us to do? What kind of support needs to be provided for them to be in the room? And then we can think of a um, yeah, village type conversation, forum, etc. And um, I've got another question about the type of people that come to co-working spaces because it, and you are welcome to challenge me in this, but it just seems to be that a, um, you know, like we're, we're doing a big thing about inclusion and diversity. We did it at the Juicy co-working event and we've run a couple of events in London and we're doing it at co-working Europe next week. And it's all about inclusion, diversity and accessibility. And kind of, it, it just always seems that co-working spaces are full of like nice white people usually men with um, Apple machines and, you know, I'm a nice white person with an Apple machine, but that that's who co-working seems to be for. And I think, and you, you don't, I don't very often bump into people doing anything other than like design or programming or freelancing, writing things. And, you know, what, what could we do to get, be more of a business resource rather than a, cool trendy resource hmm. i think it's a good question i don't have a fixed answer to it and i think the workshop is also a place where i hope that we can come to some collective solutions here but i think that that's, this is where the question of community is so important I think one of the mistakes that co-working spaces have made is that they started to see community in a very narrow way and just for the people who are part of their space to be supportive to each other, to share skills, to have socials together. And I think that can actually, in its worst case, be really dangerous because you start to think of community as a small group rather than understanding the role of this co-working space and the um, knowledge creation that happens there, the skills that are available in the wider context. So I think, first of all, we need to move away from this artificial idea of community and so start you say, engaging. When, and start when you engaging. say artificial, mm. sorry, when you, when you say artificial, can you say a bit more about that? 
Well, at best, in co-working spaces, the thing that people have in common is that they're all self-employed. Um, but usually in order for them to start talking to each other, start working with each other, um, in most co-working spaces, there is um, a member of staff present who makes the introductions, makes the connections, um, is actually even titled community organizer, community activator, community catalyst, tumbler, whatever you want to call it, um, who builds that community. So we are paying someone to bring us together. Um, for me, if I think of the deeper sense of community, that is something absolutely natural to us human beings as, as, as social beings. To me, that form of community is artificial. I guess you could argue, argue with that, but that's definitely how I see it. You know, I've never thought of it like that. And I am, I'm, I'm racing in my head to go. So who would change the toilet paper? But it is, it is. I, I naturally. Okay, here's my here's my response to that is, when I'm in that paid position, I hate it. When I'm not in that position, I just do it without thinking. Yeah. Uh, and I think mm -hmm. that's kind of what you were touching on. Like I, I will, I will not even think about pulling people together and I, lo I love introducing two people together at things and then running off and leaving them hanging to sort of work it out for themselves and I'm, I'm well known for that nasty social trick but um <laughs> it's you know it just comes naturally but when I have to, if, if you have to score me on how many people I put in in touch this week I would you know go and hide in a cupboard so that is that is something I'd never thought of it quite quite that way so uh, how could we um what do you think about the just a tangent a bit? What what do you think about the word community together? Because I, I think it's just everyone talks about it, but there's so many different interpretations of it. Some of them like commercial interpretations of it. Some you know lo lots of different ways. But when people use that word, what happens to you? Well, it really depends. I think. I think you can see when it's being used in, a, in an authentic way or you experience it when it's used in an authentic way. Uh, if it is used in a way that it does not seem authentic to me, I cringe. <laughs> I really cringe. I think uh, there is a lot of appropriating appropriation of the term community happening and I think it's really problematic and sad to be honest. It is. I don't think any of my gang are going to disagree with that. So, so my last thing is we, we sort of open with a bit about gentrification and I have seen a, a lot of well-intentioned actually. Um, they're not, you know, nasty developers just crushing things, but I've seen a lot of co-working spaces open up in not necessarily deprived areas, but like, it's like someone just went and put this group of nice white people with their Apple Macs in a in another community and you know it's totally out of space and it seems like okay for that to be there, that co working space to be there, full of nice, you know, educated white middle class people and no one seems to question it. And this is I'm sort of bravely bringing this up because it's come up a few times in conversations this year is, you know, kind of like, how does that happen? Or how does that seem okay? Or what could the people in that space do to, you know, not just take advantage of the uh, low rent in that area of town? I think first, there is, I feel like there was a lot of sensed helplessness uh, for these gentrifying communities, almost in a way of like gentrification is inevitable. The, yes, I'm a middle class white person with a laptop, but this is just where I move. This is just what's happening. Um, and a sense of guilt, at least with 
uh, amongst the people that I've spoken to. It's not that people are proud of it, but um, no one really knows what to do about it. Uh, and this is where I think it's going to be interesting to look at partnership building and connecting and forming new alliances. I don't have a recipe as of yet, but I think to understand questions of privilege, to really center inclusion and diversity into all our organizational strategies. And as I said before, it's going to be about partnership building. That's great. The um, So can you I'll obviously put a link in the show notes to what we're doing, but can you give us a little, um, just do a complete advert for the workshop and don't hold back. <laughs> okay. So um, yeah. So if you're interested in gentrification, if you're part of a co-working space, if you love co-working spaces, if you hate co-working spaces, please come and let's have a conversation about how they could work differently and how they could actually serve the communities. We're going to talk about who is left out currently of the idea of self-employed empowerment. We're going to rethink the word community. If you cringe whenever you hear community on uh, the media or a new slogan from a co-working space, definitely be in the room. And... I want us all to walk out with new strategies for how to build partnerships at the local level and ensure that together we can bring about local economic development. That is great. And you're doing it in three locations, which two are? Locations, two, two locations. Two locations. Uh, so it's going to be in London on the 24th of November. And that's going to be at our friends in Space 4, which is uh, those of you who came to the We Share Summit would have met Polly, um, who's a... Uh, chief troublemaker in our in our little environment um and what's the other date and the other date bernie i don't know it's not till next year <laughs> it's oh, good don't worry um it's in bristol next it is next in march. bristol yeah, so, yeah I, 16th of march actually yeah that would be great. So, that so if two... you're super keen, you can put it in the diary already i have i always wanted an excuse to go to bristol so th- <laughs> It's good to say as well, there's two price tiers, isn't there? There's there's um, £75 if you are just a regular human being, but if you're on a low income price or a student or doing research or something like that, um, it's just £50. And we will put a link in the show notes to book directly to that one in London. Um, so is, is there anything else you'd like to add there, Steffi? No, that's all from my side, Bernie. Brilliant. So thank you very much for taking the time to um, be on our podcast today. And I'm dying to see you in real life and very much looking forward to this and thank you for all the work you're doing i've been before our podcast i was like stalking you online and seeing what you're involved in (laughs) Um, glad our paths have crossed so thank you very much thanks very much benny really excited to meet you as well bye bye